year? Uh, no, they're, it's the, they took two weeks off um, their vacation and they got their 20, 50th anniversary. 50, so that's yeah. great. Oh, thank you. Father's love. You give me that. Huh? You already gave me one. Did I? Yeah, you gave me like four of them already. I am saved, brother. Okay. You don't um, have to keep giving me on. gospel, bro. I just have a question. Yes, Nobody ma'am. Would I have seen that. In the uh, booklet today. Thank you. The campus. For what? Do what we hand out. Oh, maybe Jared's got them. I'm so glad we're going to talk about donkeys today. Donkeys. Don donkey, right? Not donkeys. Donkeys. Donkey. No. donkey, not donkeys. I never would have. Who said donkey you know, last week? Me. Well, oh, okay. Donkey. Yeah, donkey, that's right. You know, which is a, a donut <laughs> you put into your coffee. Yeah. I never, I never caught on to that. Yeah. Alex, hello. You're um, uh, you're not coming in today. You're just gonna be online, or are you coming in later? Un un undo your thing, Amajig. Oh, thank you. Yes, I I will be there in soon. Okay, all right. But you're gonna watch online for right now, huh? Yes, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. That's so neat. Yeah, isn't that great? Yeah. So, um, well, welcome. You're the only one online so far, but we will see what happens as we continue on. Um, let me. Can you get something out of here? You know, they get that extra. I might turn it. I might turn this to where my internet is unstable a little bit because I don't plug in like everybody else does. Look at that, I can turn this if you guys can hear speaking. And when you guys are speaking, I want you guys to speak loud. How's that? There's me for right now. Oops, this makes it even more, more weird. Oh, well, let me let in some people here. All right, all right. So we're only starting with three of us so far. People must skip out. They must not like me, and they just really love Peter. I don't think I'm appreciated, you know? The Bible says a prophet is not honored in his own hometown. So I understand. <laughs> hey, Alex, we might be able to hear you today, too, when you talk. That would be good. Hey, Jeff and Julia. Hey, guys. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, everybody. I'm letting in some more people. Oh, my my wife is joining. Oh, right. Hi, Linda. Ah, Linda is joining. She's probably going to have no uh, picture on her because she probably doesn't want to be seen. Oh, she is seen. Oh, <laughs> hi, Linda. Everybody says hello. <laughs> Hi, Linda. You notice I'm not the happy. Shabbat shalom. You can probably hear my gravelly voice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Did you get some tea? Uh, starting with coffee. Okay. Starting with coffee. Yes, indeed. <laughs> this gentleman, his wife, there. She, they always come in and out. Like, what's the yeah, it's the back. It's a background. It, the, the background does it. Perfect. Whatever awesome. You want. Right here would be good for right now. Since I'm already set up here, might as well do it. Yeah, Thank you. I don't you, know. In the kitchen, yeah. you know, we got the. Did you have the bulletins for today? Yes. Okay. Oh, oh yes. All right. As we let people in, let's get ready, though. It's a That's quarter right. till. Let's get ready to start. Um, all righty. It's hard to believe we're already in numbers, right, guys? Everybody online, it's hard to believe we're in numbers. Okay. So, you guys, too, you two talk shop later. We're going to start the study. So, you guys talk shop about passing those out later all right avinu makenu our father our king thank you for this morning thank you for this opportunity to come before you and worship you and exalt you and to study your word and to look at balach today the destroyer and to really understand what uh you have in store for us through this these passages today we pray lord that you give us wisdom and insight and uh and teach us uh uh insights to you through this process, how everything points to you, Yeshua. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kirishanu b'mitzvotah v'tivanu la'asok b'vrei Torah. Blessed are you, Lord God, ruler of the universe, who brings forth your commandments and, and sanctifies us with the studying of the word of God. Amen. We all amen. said amen. Amen, amen. 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 All right. Amen. Have a seat. No Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I am, we are on uh, Numbers 22. Numbers 22, verse 2, and it's, it's, uh, the name of it is Balak, okay, Balak, and this is one of the famous 
This is one of the famous passages in all the scriptures. Seems like people who don't even believe in God have heard of this um, this thing with uh, Balaam's donkey. The talking it's donkey, not donkey, right? The talking donkey. The talking donkey, not the donkey. Uh, last week, uh, uh, Sunny, Sunny said donkey, and then she said it. She sounds she sounds English by saying donkey. You say donkey as well. That must be an Eastern thing then, a northeastern thing. The donut, you donkey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Donkey. Yeah, yeah. Where I'm from, yeah, from Wyoming, we use the A word, right? How come it's Oregon? <laughs> it's it's Oregon, not Oregon, because there's no E at the end of it. Everybody or, else says or, Oregon, and or, it's or, not how I you say it. Oregon. It's Oregon. Oregon. Like a gun. Not, Oregon. 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 Not with a gun. With a U. Oregon. Yeah, yeah. Oregon. It's but it's spelled. Stupid. It's got a no, but it's it's pronounced with a U. But Oregon. It's different than the donkey. Yeah, the donkey is an O. It's no, not a U, so it's a, it's not a donkey. All right, so let's get started, guys. But if you guys call it donkey, that's fine too. You know, we we all have our accents. We all have our different, you know, twangs. You know, from Wyoming, there's twangs and everything like that. All right, excellent. So, um, all right, so we start here at Numbers twenty-two, verse two, and I'm gonna just go ahead and read because I'd like to get through some of the other Torah uh, portion today as well. When Balak son of Zippor realized that all B'nai Israel had done this, done all, all that Israel had done to the Amorites. Moab became terrified because they were so many, because there were so many people. Moab was filled with dread because of B'nai Israel. Moab said to the elders of Midian, the multitude will lick up everything around us like the ox licks up the grass of the field. Now Balak, son of Zippor, was king of Moab at the time. He sent messengers to summon Balaam, son of Beor, at Pethor, near the river in his native land, saying to him, Look now, a people has come out of Egypt. See now, that, see now they cover the surface of the earth and are settling beside me. Come now, curse the people for me, because they are too strong uh, for me. Perhaps I may be able to defeat them and drive them away from the country. I know that whatever you bless will be blessed and whatever you curse will be cursed. But it's pretty amazing that he brings that up right there. That he says that that takes us to where? What does that passage remind us of? Anybody? Okay, the more we shake the table, the more this is going to shake, guys. So we try not to shake the table too heavily because this is going to shake. Okay, Linda, go ahead. That was the blessing that God gave to Abraham. Exactly. Abraham, what we find in Abraham chapter 12, where God tells Abram, he goes, I will make you into a great nation. Those who bless you will be blessed. Those who will curse you will be cursed. So it's interesting here, the king of Moab, uh, Balak, or not, yeah, Balak, the king of Moab, um, said, listen, uh, I know that whoever you bless will be blessed and whoever you curse will be cursed. Okay. So we get to verse seven, the elders of Moab and Midian left with divination fees in their hands. So they, they must have practiced divination, right? They understood this concept that if you seek out a prophet or you seek out a div diviner, and at this point, they were treating him like he was just some kind of a, a palm reader type thing, right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what happens is um, we see that today. People go, unfortunately, we see that going around all over today. They're still diviner people out there or whatever people who practice divination um you know they go to palm readers and they go to seers they go to everybody but the the word of god you know and even among among the the believers in messiah uh and, and whether we use the word kahal congregation of god or we use this term church um people sometimes will seek out prophets just to get a word they're just, they're so hungry for a word of God that they just want to seek out prophets and get a word from the Lord. I don't think that's bad if your intent and your, your heart is in the right place, but if your heart isn't in the right place and you're looking for that to be your sole source of hearing from the Lord, that's no different than just seeking out a divinator, a, a divin, a, you know, a seer or a, a, that, a, that's my opinion. Some people may have other opinions, but I know Paul's itching at the thing. You can calm down. You can relax. Okay. Let me let me finish my thought here. And then, okay. uh, you know, you, you know, Sonny used to do that too. Ooh, 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 like Coach Hack. You know, ooh, ooh, Mr. Kata, Mr. Kata. Um, uh, but the thing is, the thing is, is that we um, we have to understand that, that when we seek the face of the Lord, we will hear things from the prophetic people in our minute, in, in around us. 
a lot of people despise prophetic ministry, right? And prophetic ministry can also be one of those things that, you know, the, the scriptures say that prophecy is subject to the prophets. we got to really be careful in doing that. You have to test everything you hear. Test everything. The scriptures talk about a testimony of two or three witnesses. So we always have to have uh, the opportunity to bring it before the word of God, no matter what you hear from the Lord, and make sure it lines up with the word of God. And we have to receive it. So, Paul, go ahead. I was going to say, I, I believe that um, prophetic words are should be confirmation of something that the Lord's already put in, you know, as opposed to something out of clear blue sky. Uh, that's been my experience primarily. That the Lord will speak yeah. something to you that he's already placed in your heart? Through a prophet. Through yeah, a prophet. I mean, it's sure. a confirmation of something that, and and the real word that he has for us is here. It's going to come from here, the, the prophetic, right. you know, revelation. Yeah. And, uh, Definitely, there's definitely a confirmation in that, you know, and there's times where you will hear something that's totally different than what you've been, you weren't expecting, and you still want to be open to that, you know, God speaks to us through prophetic dreams at times too, yes. right, he speaks to us through a, a simple word that a child says, or somebody else says, if you're listening, you know, the key is, is listen to the Holy Spirit, you, you try to lead a life led of the Holy Spirit, and then you'll recognize things. People who don't lead a life by the Holy Spirit don't recognize when God's speaking to them. And a lot of times he'll speak to us through, through things that are amazing. If, if, you, if, you, you know, if God is working on, if you've been praying for patience and God has been working on your patience, you're going to run across situations where your patience is going to be tested a lot. And, and depending on whether you fail or not, he's going to keep testing you. <laughs> and as he continues to test us, we got to ask the Lord at this point. I'm going to switch that around over here. Now you can see me. I'm going to keep switching that around. Uh, depending on how, how much he um, he tests us and we pass or fail, we're going to keep getting tested. But once we recognize, oh, wow, thank you, God, you're testing me with this. Thank you, you're testing me with anger. I see it now. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Lord. And then that helps you get through that process because it's easy to just say, why is everything getting difficult for me? Why is everything falling apart? Why is everything this and everything that? And it's easy for us to pull away from, from what God is really trying to do in our lives. And, and, you know, and so we have to recognize it. And so it's the same way, uh, seeking out a pro prophet or a seer to hear the word of the Lord. You know, I, I think that there's a danger in that. Um, you should be stable enough in your own walk with God that you're hearing the word of God like you were talking about, Paul. The word of God is this. This is how he speaks to us. This is how he ministers to us. And then in the process of this, anything anybody else says is a confirmation to what he's already been speaking to us. So I think that's important. Uh, uh, really quick, yeah. Uh, um, Quick preface, uh, my neighbor for many years was the king of the gypsies. You know, they run tarot sure. card and, you know, sure. there's palm reading places sure, all yeah. over the city. And when he passed about uh, six, seven years ago, this was New York City, the tarot palm uh, place over here in Boca knew about it. He was that big, but he was humble. interesting. But just the reason I bring that up is because I know people are always seeking. And I, and I you know, and, you're, and, I, and I agree with you. I think the Lord, when he speaks to you, he's going to speak to you directly. He doesn't need, when you have relationship. That means, you know, there is no third party or person in between you and that relationship. But I'll, I, I'll make this short, you know, because we've heard homicidal maniacs say, God told me to kill these 20 oh, people. Yeah. yeah. So, so, for me, like so for me, uh, what I want to uh, just put in is to recognize the voice of God. You know, you know, when God's speaking to you, he's, you know, when yeah. he speaks to me, there's a certain tone and uh, the way he speaks to me and that's that's all i have to say you know when it's god speaking to you and you and i and thank god for the sermon because you know when the enemy's speaking to you too so amen but i i don't know where how where that comes from maybe it's just uh, a continued growth or that strong relationship uh because you know uh, that's all i have to say yeah. no that's great that's really good insight and i think it leads to the fact that we we look for heroes in our lives we look for heroes we look for for people who are close to God we look when I say that like for instance you look at some of the people I mean it's you win one golf tournament you become a superhero you win a basketball tournament you become a superhero and people start you know you get your name on lights you get your your name brand shoes you get all this other kind of stuff and we like to do that but then what happens is when people reach the pinnacle other people just love to tear them down 
You know, everybody wants somebody to become rich and famous. And until they become rich and famous, then everybody's against them. And, you know, everybody wants Trump to become president and becomes president. They, they don't want him in there. So you get all this kind of stuff that happens like this. Uh, and that happens across boundaries. So it's, a, it's the same in, in ministry, believe it or not. One of the reasons why there is so many affairs in the congregation across the country or the church, if we want to call it, the ecclesia, uh, there's so many uh, things like that, is that anybody who's in power, people are drawn to. And a lot of times if guys are not, if, if the rab, pa, pastor or rabbis are not stable in their own relationship and young women see a person in power or strength like that, and they don't know how to say no to that, or they don't know how to recognize that, they fall. And that happens a lot. There are a lot of people who fall in that situation, but this happens in every, every uh, job that we can think of. Everything, right? You get you, um, a lot of businessmen are sleeping around on their wives and everything like that. There's something about when people, People seek out people that have power and have um, uh, just some kind of weight behind them, right? So it makes sense that people are seeking out prophets because they want to hear from the word of God, especially if their, their prophecies have been confirmed, right? Because the Old Testament had a, a testimony to that. The Old Testament said, uh, what, what was the situation in the Old Testament, <laughs> in the Tanakh? What did it say? It said, it said uh, here's how you test a prophet. And it had a testing of it. If they didn't pass, they were supposed to be stoned to death. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, Sonny, speak okay. loud. I was speak. going to say, in one way, it's a good thing because we are, when we have our pastors, our rabbis, or whoever, we're, we want to treat them with respect and we want them to be more than we are ourselves. And sometimes God puts whoever he wants there and he puts some perfect people there. When we realize these people with that authority are just like ourselves. Exactly. God doesn't want us to look at man. He wants us to look at him. Amen. Amen. I, I thought Samuel, he went to the prophet three times. And the third time the prophet says, I didn't call you. It's the Lord that wants to speak to you. Yeah, exactly. The Lord wants yeah. so what you're hearing is the Lord. And, and even, 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 and even then he was like, wait, uh, what, what do you keep waking me up for type of thing, you know? So yeah, that's really good. So uh, yeah, excellent. Good job. Oh, Linda, somebody waving me here online or something? Somebody waving at me? Okay, let me uh, admit somebody else. Stephen Solomon is is joining us this morning. That's great. Okay, so let me take this back around towards me. Um, I'll keep, I'll keep, it's good though. It's good because it gives us that light. Yeah, it gives a good light there. Let me see if I can go back farther. Lift up on this a little bit more. There we go. Okay, yeah, so... Um, Hey, Stephen. Nice having you join us. All right. So let's continue on. We got to um, uh, verse seven. The elders of Moab and Midian left with divination fees in their hand. When they came to Balaam, um, they told him uh, Balak's words. He said to them, spend the night here. I will give you an answer just as Adonai tells me. So the officials of Moab stayed with Balaam. God came to Balaam and asked, who are these men with you? Now, God knew, but he's asking Balaam what's going on here, right? Now, we'll notice what he says to him here. Good morning. Notice what he says to him. And it says this. It says, uh, uh, Balaam said to God, Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab, sent word to me. See, the people coming out of Egypt covered the surface of the land. Come now, curse them for me. Perhaps I will be able to fight against them and drive them away. And God said to Balaam, um, do not go with them. Do not curse them, for they are blessed. Interesting. Let's stop there. What, what was observation you guys see there? Anything? I'm sorry. Oh, that's fine. Sure. How about online? You guys see anything? Jarrett? They're blessed because he blessed them. I mean, they're mine. They're mine. Yeah, they're blessed because he blessed them. Amen? Amen. That's really uh, good. Alex? But yeah, but he uh, got his talking in the past he said they are blessed it's past sure so, sure. so the action is done yeah yeah and so god's not going to curse them because they've already been blessed and that kind of speaks to us too is that we should understand is that when god gives you a calling or he gives a word or brings a word into your life don't dismiss it because he's already spoken something into your life he, he, the scriptures say that his his gifts and his callings are irrevocable we read that and it's true. It's like, you know, for me, I went through a lot of junk. You guys know that when I got divorced, I mean, that put me on a back, back, uh, you know, a really bad place in my life. It puts you in a place where you're just like, 
uh, wow, you know, Lord, am I even usable anymore? Is anybody going to ever listen to me? You go on this, woe is me, woe is me. You, you kind of move away from your calling. You move away from all kinds of things and you struggle with that. And you're asking the Lord, it's like, Lord, is there any, anything else ever uh, in store for me, you know, type of thing. But he never took that away. It's like, I found myself every job I did pastoring people, you know, being a rabbi to people. I saw myself everywhere I went. Uh, still, I mean, I work in a hospital. I'm praying for people and I'm talking to the nurses and the doctors and, and they're asking me questions because I had a doctoral degree. I was respected by some of the people in that profession because I was Dr. Adrian Bernal, right? And I wasn't medical doctor, but the doctors respected me at a point because they know what it takes to become a doctor. You know, the hard work that you put in to do that. And so because I had my doctoral degree, um, it opened up a door for me to, to minister the gospel to these guys without mm -hmm. preaching the gospel to them. But it was interesting how God was using me in the midst of my, my own storm. God was using me as a lighthouse to other people. And I think that if we, we catch that in our lives, that, uh, that at times it seems like our life is falling apart, but if we remain focused on the Lord, we will be a lighthouse to somebody else getting through that same storm. Mm -hmm. right. And we forget that we want to, we want to see the lighthouse through our own storm and want people to, to, uh, you know, to leave us alone or do whatever, or we want to, we want to just kind of be on our own and woe is me and woe is me and go off on our own thing. And I think that if we realize and during those times, that's when God will use us the most because he does. I mean, I don't know if you guys know that, but he uses you mostly when you're not high on the mountain. He uses you when you're in the valley. When you're high on the mountain, you just recognize everything of God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You just, you recognize that God is doing something because you're, you're up on the top of the mountain and you, you got a better horizon, right? You can see all the things that God is doing in your own life and everybody else's life. But when you're down in that valley and you think you're in the, the only one in the mud, that's when he uses you, if you let him use you. So I think this is important for us. Okay. So we have here, let me uh, put this thing here again. Rabbi is going to say, Adrian, you've been moving around too much with that camera. Well, I wanted to get every, I wanted to get everybody in, in here. Yeah. People, people at home watching might get all like, ah, whatever. That's okay. All right. So um, drive them away. Then verse, uh, we have verse 12. Okay. He says, go, God said to Balaam, do not go with them. Do not curse them for they are blessed. So Balaam got up in the morning and said to the officials of Balak, go back to your country for Adonai has refused to let me go with you. It's interesting. So make note of this. God says, do not go with these guys. Okay. So he doesn't do that. So the Moabite officials got up, went back to Balak and said, Balaam refused to come with us. Balak again sent other dignit dignitaries more numerous and honored than these previous ones. So he's not just sending the, you know, uh, the local representatives. Now they're sending the whole Senate. <laughs> okay, so Balak is now sending some of his top men. They also came to Balaam and said to him, thus says Balak, the son, the son of Zippor, Please let nothing keep you from coming to me. I will richly reward you and everything you tell me I will do. Just come now and curse these people for me. So again, we know that God's not going to curse them. But Balaam answered Balak's servants, even if Balak gave me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot cross beyond the mouth of Adonai, my God, to do anything small or great. But now you may spend the night here too. Then I may find out anything else Adonai may say to me. So he's saying, listen, guys, I can't say anything or do anything beyond what the Lord tells me to say or do. I can't let anything come out of my mouth that isn't from the Lord. Um, I think that's pretty profound in and of itself. It's very profound because in this, we find that um, a, a true prophet of God or somebody that really wants to serve God only wants to speak what God has to say to somebody in their life. Now, we gain wisdom and insight to things, right? Our lives, we gain wisdom and insight that we can give in and impart into others. But I think we've got to be careful that when we say, thus says the Lord, it better be thus says the Lord, mm. right? It really does. I mean, because when somebody says, thus says the Lord, and that does not come to fruition, and it doesn't come to fruition, and, and we should be able to see it come through a fruition, although we know that at times God speaks into our lives, and it doesn't happen for many, many, many years, but when a prophetic word comes into your life, it should be relatively close to things that are going on or something that God has done in your life, something that you can judge or you can weigh to find out within at least a year or two years or whatever. You know, we had uh, David Wilkerson prophesied many times that, you know, 
that the world was going to, you know, Jesus was going to come back. There's a lot of people during this time that said uh, Donald Trump is going to win, <laughs> right? How many prophets within our congregation have you guys heard say that Donald Trump was going to win? Mm. Now, that doesn't, nothing. now, wait, but, <laughs> but, but without getting political, but let me just say this, is that he still has four years to run if he wants to do it, right? He's still got, and it's possible that they are speaking to that, that he's going to win on the, who knows? Who knows? But, the, but the reality is, is the reality is, is when somebody gives you a prophetic word, a prophetic word, and they say, thus says the Lord, it needs to be tested. It needs to be tested with the word of God. And that's what we were talking about earlier with Paul, or when you brought that up, Paul, we need to know where we stand in the word of God. So we have to have that diet of food from the lord right this is the word of god this is the food this is the bread that we that we live by every word that comes from the mouth of god not from bread alone but from the word of god so the more and more we study the word of god the more and more we live and breathe and eat and have nourishment in who god is and what he says to us somebody had their hand raised I, I, over i i was just going to say there is also knowledge that the lord gives us which is different than prophetic words but sure. it's an insight that we can speak into people's lives i believe yeah. the lord showed me this yeah uh you know as a word of knowledge exactly and uh which is encouraging and helps build up and yeah. and prophecy is for edification exhortation and comfort according to what the word says yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, and as a partisan you know political hack that i am you know i have to admit though that i was a christian first and so god's in total control and in retrospect, it seems like I realize now he is in control and I can see some of the, you know, what the plan, uh, the, the plan is slowly unfolding. Right. And so I realize now that, you know, maybe, you know, it's all, it's all for the best. Amen. 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 And that's the thing, you know, a lot of times today when God speaks to us and, and he prophesies into our lives, he, he, it's, it's encouragement, it's exhortation. Lots of, sometimes it is repent. You know, you've been slipping away and doing whatever you want to been doing, been seeking your own desires and stuff, kind of get straight ahead. But typically when God ministers to us now, especially through a prophetic word, because the spirit of God should be convicting you already. Mm -hmm. So when the spirit of God speaks to you and gives you a word or a prophetic word, it should be something that it, uh, comforts you and strengthens mm -hmm. you and, and brings light to you. And, and it's not like God has become softer. You know, God is the same always. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It says the issue is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Um, so it says that in Hebrews, what, 13, 8, 14, 8, 13, 8. The reality is, is that when, when he hasn't changed, but how he operates in our lives has changed. He no longer speaks to us through prophets, right? He says, I will put my word within your spirit. And, and you, he goes, no one will need a teacher for I myself will teach you according to the Brit Chadashah. Right. So according to the new covenant, God's speaking to us. The Holy Spirit's convicting us. We are filled with the spirit. This is why it's important for us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We're leaded and guided and directed. And so now when God does speak into your life, a lot of times it's going to be words of encouragement. But he will rebuke us through our brothers and sisters. He's not going to publicly shame you. If somebody publicly shames you with a prophetic word, that's not really the heart of God. He's not going to do it. God does not shame his people, but he will convict you of your sin. And that sin should bring you to repentance and reconciliation. That's how God operates and works. So, all right, so let's continue on. Um, verse 20, I believe. God came to Balaam at night and said to him, since these men came to you to summon you, arise and go with them. However, only the word I tell you, you are to do. So persistence, uh, you know, maybe from uh, Balak persistence to get Balaam to go with them right persistence but notice how God allows them to go this time at first he says don't go with them and then now because other men came to summon you it's like okay go with them but be careful you only tell them what I tell you to say okay so God came to Balaam uh, to do so verse 21 so Balaam got up in the morning and saddled his donkey <laughs> We were joking about that earlier. Do we say donkey or we say donkey? We say either way is fine with me. Okay, so he saddled up his donkey and went with the Moabite princess, uh, the princess. But the anger of God burned because he was going. Interesting here. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So the first two, the first time we hear him say, don't go. Then we hear God tell Balaam, at least with Balaam's words here, that God said, go with them, but only, I only, uh, only the word I tell you are you to do. And so Balaam got up in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the Moabite princes. 
But the anger of God burned because he was going. The angel of Adonai, which is a precursor to Yeshua, right? The angel of the Adonai. We know that the angel of Adonai is definitely above an angel. We know that definitely the angel of Adonai was worthy of worship. Joshua bowed down before him. And he said, don't. He didn't tell him, don't bow down to me. The angel of the Lord uh, showed up to Moses and Moses, and he told Moses, the, the, the ground that you are now standing on is holy. Take off your sandals, right? So the angel of the Lord, we know, is really Yeshua. He wasn't in flesh yet, but he was definitely an incarnate, you know, what they call is a Christophany is what the church terms they use for that Christophany. But it's, a, it's, a, it's pretty much, an, it's, it's a precursor of Yeshua that shows up in human form. So it's kind of cool, kind of cool. All right. Oh, okay. Stephen, go ahead. You have to un, un, you have to you have to unmute, Stephen. I can't hear you unless you unmute. Okay, can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. Um, the angel you were talking about, the one that was above uh, Adonai, was that what they called the Metatron, like the voice of God? There's there's some some argument on that. Uh, Jewish scholars would say this is metronon uh, um, that you're dealing with, and others would say it's Yeshua. We say it's Yeshua. Okay. It's definitely the voice of God. And there is some argument to that, that scholars go back and forth. Christian scholars and Jewish scholars argue with one another about all this stuff. Um, okay. But yeah, it is it is part of that. And but but definitely he's he's not. He's it's definitely Yeshua, as you see throughout the scriptures. It is part of the Godhead of, 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 but, you know, we know that Yeshua, it says he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he's been around. A lot of times people say, well, Yeshua was born 2000 years ago. Prior to that, he wasn't divine and that he wasn't, he wasn't around. He was just the word of God. I'm sorry. Okay. That just doesn't fit the scriptures. You can use scriptures to argue everything you want, but all things were created through him, by him and for him. The scriptures say from the, okay. from the beginning so if he was just the word of god coming out of god's mouth then it's only the father yeah. it's only the father and then the father came and died to us and pretended to be the son and not the father and then right. pretended to pray to the father but was the son and then he had to leave to come back as the holy spirit so yet he now he's pretending to be the holy spirit you know this this concepts that people have out there just they can't seem to con to con understand that there's a multi multitudinous complexity, if that's the right word, a multiple comp uh, a major complexity of who God is, and we can't put them in our nice little three persons in one type thing. They're God. united definitely, but uh, they are definitely united, and they're definitely part of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and they are so complex that it's hard for us to understand. But not one of them is diminished of their their Godhead or of their God, their divinity, so to speak, but they work in cohesion with one another. So anyhow, um, All right, thank you. Yeah, you're good. Thanks for the question. All right, so let's move on. Oh, go ahead. But, um, she was, she was, she was, she was, she was says he only does things through the father. Yeah, he says, I only do things that I see the father do, and I only say things that I hear the father right. says. So obviously, he was connected with the father. You can't disconnect them. Right. So that's the other thing. You can't disconnect the father. Like I've showed you guys with water before. Mm -hmm. That if I take water out of a bottle and then put a drop of water out of that same bottle in here, it's still H2O. Mm -hmm. It hasn't lost its, it hasn't diminished its power authority. But there's but these guys are such on such a level. The Godhead is on such a level that that Godhead never loses its unity with one another. It never, it's like they have a constant cell phone, right? That's open and, and always on, you know, in a lot of ways, if you guys can understand that. It's like he, it's like, so when he, he hears, he hears what the father, because he can't speak against his father. He, and what the father says, he can't, and what the father does, he can't go against it. Uh, the, I mean, it's just, it, it's a beautiful picture of this unity that we can't, it's, it's so hard for us to explain. It really is, and I think a lot of Jewish people struggle with that because they've been taught that this term God means the Father only. And when we hear the term God, it's a title, okay? And I've shared this on Wednesday night. For those of you that have come in on Wednesday night, you guys, aren't, you guys have been part of this. The term God as a title, we put a lot of attributes to that term. 
So with the term God, we put on there, he's loving and kind and all this. We put human characteristics to this term. This term God is simply Elohim in Hebrew. And that in the ancients uh, referred to anything in the spiritual realm as God. These are gods. These are gods. Uh, this is why the Greeks would call the, you know, they said we, we call it Greek mythology today, but they believed in Hercules. They believed in Zeus. They believed in these gods. So this, this it's a term. It's a term of, of, of placement. If you guys, if, you know, so to speak, a term of placement. So that term of placement would have been in the spiritual realm. So a realm above and beyond our realm, there's gods, right? And so, but Yahweh is the God of B'nai Israel. So when he started identifying, saying, I'm the God of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I am Yahweh. I am, he becomes, he, then he puts all these attributes. And if you look in the scriptures, he has all these attributes that are, uh, I see you, Linda, you can put your hand down. I'll call you here in a second. My wife is like, <laughs> she's so good. Um, so um, so uh, with with all the attributes that we, we say is God really doesn't belong to that title. It belongs to Yahweh. Yahweh Yahweh is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You guys see what I'm saying? That that's who Yahweh is. Yeah. So all the attributes of God belong to Yahweh because He's so complex. It doesn't belong to God per se because God is a title, just like doctor, just like rabbi. That's what the scriptures teach. But we've over the years we we've, we've started putting characteristics to that term, and that's what confuses people. So the Jewish people get confused when they hear the word God. What they think of is the Father. And I would think most of us think that when we hear the term God, when somebody says, oh, God told me this and God told me that, we just automatically go to the Father. We don't realize that God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's why you hear the term God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We, we hear that term, but it's because God is a title. It's not a, it's not a characteristic type of thing. But he said, when we pray, say, our Father. Our Father, right. So Yeshua teaches to pray to the Father. So we pray to God through our Father, right? Through, through the Father. And we pray to the Father in the name of the authority, the, the strength of, right? The, the name, which means all of his fame and who he is in Yeshua, right? And then we trust for the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. And, and into all truth, right? So that's, that's really how it should be looked at that way. But when we just hear the term God, we want to automatically think of the Father. Mm -hmm. That's why it seems so strange to us that when somebody says that Jesus is God to Jewish people, they're like, whoa, that's weird. That, that's, that, that sounds like we're worshiping a man. Just said, you know, but, but you know, God, it's funny because I understand that you, you, you know, it's very difficult for some folks to, to you know, uh, to just accept you know, yeah. on faith. But, yeah. you know, but just like, so just correct for wrong, but it seems like, no, we have the physical manifestation of God, which is Jesus. Then we have the spiritual manifestation, which is the Holy Spirit. And I and so see it that way, you know, um, is his way of, you know, trying to reach us or, right. you know, or connecting with us. And it's such that we're all born, as you said, even the Greeks, you know, we're born and, and we already have this plug that has to be plugged in somewhere. We have desire to understand what's going on. Where are my answers? Why am I here? Is there a greater being? And that's just in all of us. Uh, it's sort of like we're born that way. And so that's why, yeah, the Bible says we're born to worship the Lord. Amen. You know, I, I, I really quickly always say, I always throw in a pop reference, of, you know, the great movie, Contact, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, they send, you know, this person's expecting to go out into the universe to get answers. As it turns out, you didn't go anywhere except go inside. Yeah. And then you got your answers. Yeah. Amen. 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 Linda, Lin, hold on, guys. Linda had her hand raised. You got an online audience too here. And then you guys just want to interject. So hold on a second. All right. Yes. So Linda, you had your hand raised. I did. Yeah. So this is such an important and beautiful um, clarification of God and who he is and all his attributes. And from what Sheila mentioned and also Paul, um, the relationship between the father son and the holy spirit there's a mutual submission there that we see the son is submitted to the father and the holy spirit glorifies the son and that since we're created in his image we are also commanded to mutually submit to each other so it's amazing and beautiful how god and, and, gives and us god that even picture. and then uh, yeshua even prays his prayer is lord let them be one as you and i are one you know that 
I mean, he says that. And that prayer that he says, so that means that we are supposed to be uni united and unified as one in our thoughts, in our actions, in our deeds, as much as they are. That's a huge prayer. How do you do that with the people? You know, but I'll tell you what, when you go across this world, I've been everywhere across this world. When you meet a true brother and sister in the Lord, there's such a unity. It's like your brothers, like you, there's a connection there so instantly. It's like, wow, you don't have to spend 20 years with that person to get to know them. It's because there's a there's an instant connection to that person and it's done through the Holy Spirit. But but, you know, Yeshua said, let us be one as he and the father are one. So very good, Linda. Thank you, uh, Stephen. You had your hand raised and Alex, you had your hand raised as well. Um, I think, okay, Stephen. Okay. Uh, Alex, you had your hand raised. No. Okay. All right. So let's move on. Um, all right. So where are we at? Verse, um, the angel moved. Okay. So the angel, of the, or let's see, where are we at? Um, uh, 22, uh, the second part of 22, the angel of Adonai stood in the road to oppose him. He was riding on his donkey, and two of his servants were with him. When the donkey saw the angel of Adonai standing in the road with his drawn sword in his hand, the donkey turned off the road and went into the field. So Balaam beat the donkey to get her back on the road. It's interesting how the donkey is a female. <laughs> yeah, women are always thinking they hear from the Lord, right? The donkey, he saw the Lord on this one. No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. You know how some guys say, Oh, my wife is so spiritual. Oh, yeah, my wife yeah, is so yeah, spiritual. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Funny how the donkey is female in here, too. Huh? We don't, we better be careful here. Linda's, Linda, yeah, Stephen is like, Boo, boo. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. So just, just messing around here to get her back on the road. But we do, guys, we have to do that to our wife sometimes, too. Honey, can you know, there's only one pothole in the road. You hit the only pothole in the road okay so stay on the road <laughs> all right so let's see then the angel of adonai stood in a narrow path between two vineyards with a wall on this side and a wall on that side when the donkey saw the angel of adonai she pressed against the wall crushing balaam's foot against the wall so balaam continued beating her the angel again moved he stood in a narrow place where there was no room to turn right or left. When the donkey saw the angel of Adonai, she lay down under Balaam. Balaam was very angry and beat the donkey with his staff. Man, man, now he's really thumping. Now he's really being impatient. Then Adonai opened the donkey's mouth and she said to Balaam, what have I done to you that you have beaten me these three times? Okay, Balaam said to the donkey, because you've made a fool of me, if I had a sword in my hand, I would kill you now. Interesting. Okay, so we are on uh, chapter 22 for, for those of you, uh, uh, chapter 22, verse 29. Okay, 22, verse 29. So Balaam said to the donkey, because you have made a fool of me, if I had a sword in my hand, I would kill you. Now, let me just make an observation here. Why doesn't Balaam just like freak out and say, oh my goodness, my donkey's talking to me. <laughs> he talks right back to the donkey <laughs> like it was a normal experience right it was a normal thing that should happen all the time right so when your dog starts talking back to you it's not the cute one where you hear i love you you know you hear dogs say, I love you, I love you, and they think oh yeah i love you i love you. no it's like i mean the donkey's actually talking to him in hebrew <laughs> <laughs> think about that for a minute a donkey speaking hebrew talking to him and he just talks to him like it's a normal situation he doesn't even <laughs> it's 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 a funny story to me but anyhow let's look at it even more okay um so he goes man if, you, if this was normal i would you know if I, if I had my you know uh he's basically saying if i had my sword in my hand man i would kill you now the donkey said to balaam am i not your donkey which i have which you have ridden as always to this day have have I ever been in the habit of doing this to you? No, he said. Then Adonai opened Balaam's eyes and he saw the angel of Adonai standing on the road with his drawn sword in his hand. So he fell on his face. Again, here's worship directed to the angel of Adonai. And, and if you look in the Hebrew, it says the, this would be the messenger of Yahweh. Okay, so in Hebrew, that's what it would say. Okay, the messenger of Yahweh. So we assume that's Gabriel? No. Nope. It's Yeshua, because Gabriel does not take worship. Uh, the angel of the Lord received worship again. So this is, again, it, it has to be this because he hadn't come in the flesh yet. You guys see what I'm saying? He had to present himself to, to the people of God in a, way, in a way that they can see him in full form 
but they couldn't quite see. I mean, remember how he told the Pharisees, I, I saw Abraham. And, you know, and he, you know, I saw Abraham. They go, well, who's this cracker saying he saw Abraham? This guy's not even 50 years old. Remember they said that? Like, who is this crazy guy? I mean, how can he's not even 50 years. How could he have seen our father Abraham? Because he was the angel of the Lord, right? So anyhow, so we see that. So here we see Balaam fall on his face. So these people knew that when this figure that came before Moses came before you name it. I mean, came, you know, he led the children of Israel out by being a pillar of fire by day. I mean, a pillar of cloud by day, a pillar of fire by night. He, uh, he leads them into battle into the promised land. Joshua sees him. He falls on his face before the Lord. Moses falls on his face before the angel of the Lord. Now we see Balaam falling on his face before the Lord. There's something, there's something about the angel of the Lord. Stephen? Yes, um, you said um, Balaam was talking to the donkey and he didn't think it stranger. Could it be because he was, like he said, you know, he was embarrassed and angry and in pain because of the donkey crushing his foot. Could he just, it just been like a, like a heat of the moment type thing? Yeah, I think I think he was he. I don't think he was in pain. I think he was just ticked off that his donkey wasn't oh. doing. What he, yeah, I think he was just, and so just in the, of the moment. He was angry, but then when yeah, the okay. Lord opened his eyes and he saw the angel of the Lord, he recognized why the donkey did what the donkey did, okay. and fell down on his face before the Lord. So he gets in a prostrate position of worship. Now, if the angel said, "Listen, I am not of God, or I'm not the you know, don't bow down to me," right? You know, because they're not, we're not allowed to worship anyone. Um, uh, so, Alex, you had something that you wanted to add? I saw your hand go up. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, this is the second time in the Bible story that an animal is talking with a human. So, mm -hmm. the first one was the serpent talking with uh, Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. And now we have a donkey talking, uh, you know talking and, and follow a conversation, a regular conversation with Balaan. So it's, for me, it's, it's, it's look like a, a, a funny tale. You know, why the Bible, um, you know, talking about this? This is a marvelous. This is, this is in our mind, it's, it's incomprehensible. Um, yeah, it, it's, it, what's really beautiful about this is he actually, like you said, he carries on a conversation. He goes, am I not the donkey that you've ridden faithfully all these years? It's like, sometimes when you look at your animals, I know my, I've had dogs that, I mean, if I could read what their, their eyes say yes. or what their mind says, that they're, you know, they, they understand. Yes. And uh, I, I think it's beautiful that we see this picture that, that, um, that we'll see in, in the new Jerusalem. I really believe we'll be able to communicate with the animals again. I believe that before the fall, Adam and Eve communicated with the animals in ways that we don't even, we're just finding today just snippets of it, how we've been able to, to minister to uh, dolphins and we've been able you know use dolphins uh, for the military and stuff. But like even there was a beluga whale that was hanging out by a dock and a, do and a woman or a, a dolphin or a whale was hanging out by the docks and, the, and a girl dropped her phone. Mm -hmm. And went down the, the 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 beluga whale or the dolphin dived down grabbed the phone and brought it back up to the person and handed the phone the the telephone back to the person it, that's a that was on instagram i saw that on instagram Flipper. And what's that okay uh, was, but anyhow, flipper. yeah flipper yeah well it wasn't on a movie it was an actual it was an actual uh extension it was really interesting but anyhow um, uh, let's keep moving because we're falling behind but here, but we're seeing some stuff take place here. So he falls on his face. Then we get to verse 32 and it says here, the angel of Adonai said to him, why have you beaten your donkey these three times? Behold, I came as an adversary because your, your way before me is a reckless one. Yeah. Now, Balaam was just following the Lord. Yeah. Interesting how the Lord did this. Now, what do you guys think? So I think it doesn't really we'll get some more details here, but I think that the Lord was testing Balaam. The Lord told him the first time, don't go with these men. Mm. And that was his first commandment to do that. And so what the reflections that I see through that is when Paul says, if any other person comes to you and ministers another gospel that we have not set before you, do not follow them. Do not listen to them. Right? When we hear this kind of, so I think it's a good warning for us to recognize that, that, um, <clears throat> that when God speaks to you to stand on that and trust what God is saying in your life and believe it, you know, Balaam sought it after God one more time 
And in that process, the Lord said, go with them at this point. Since there's so many, you might as well go with them. Okay, but only say what I tell you to do. So he was following what, what he felt like the Lord was doing. But then we see that God's anger rose up against him because of this. Uh, Linda, you have your hand up. Well, one other thing that I see that Balaam struggled with was um, people's opinion. Because when the donkey went off, he accused the donkey of making a fool of him. Right. So keep in mind, all those princes of Moab were with him. And there goes the donkey. There it goes again. Oh, there it goes again. He yep. made a fool of him. And so making people is something that we need to um, resist. Exactly. Pride. filled with pride yeah it's possible that he had pride going on exactly so we we can get we can glean a lot of this just from his mistakes right so we can glean a lot um uh anything uh any okay so all right well let's keep I just one really quick because alex had a good point there just a good yeah i mean uh, first the serpent and now the donkey yeah and it's just i'm just saying that there's perhaps a natural progression something going on here yeah, yeah. i think it's Amen. I think it's uh, I, I, I think that we've regressed from it. I really do. I really believe Adam and Eve talked to the animals in ways that we we just don't know. You know, can you imagine talking to a lion and and you know, hey, what would you like to be called? Or, you know, whatever. It's like, okay, sounds good to me. You are now called lion. <laughs> right? God can do anything. And I and I think that and and it's interesting, it says that when he called them to him, they came. Hey, you come over here you know yeah oh, what's up okay what do we call you i don't know i like to mock things okay we'll call you a parrot you know type of thing who knows i mean it's just the conversations they must have had and they walked with god in the cool of the day right because god's desire has always been to have a family that's why he keeps reconciling the world back to him and so we're going to experience things the bible says we have no no mind can conceive no i how's it go no no mind can or no ear can hear no mind can conceive what god has in store for those yeah that god has prepared for us i i can't i mean we think we're just going to be sitting around going oh worshiping god oh for eternity no he's got he's got stuff for us to do and it's going to be exciting uh alex okay <clears throat> sorry for this question but here in this uh in the verse uh, 32 where it said i came as an adversary because your your way before me is a recognition mm -hmm. so the word in hebrew in hebrew uh, ad adversary is is it has a ton has a ton for adversity now is that the actual hebrew word in there i don't have my my bible or i don't have my uh hebrew opened up but is that mm -hmm. what it says in there too i can take a look but um yeah. But I'd have to look up in the Hebrew and see what word is being used there. But the adversary is like uh, Satan, but Yeshua is not Satan. So don't uh, I, just I, 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 to be I, an adversary I, I, without I know, being. Satan. I know Yeshua is the Son of God. Is is our Savior. Yeah, but I meant like there's you know people in our lives like uh, can also be adversaries in our lives, right? We can we can be the yeah the accuser is the. The accuser of the brethren we know is Satan for sure, but yeah. So what what's the point in saying that, Alex? That is that is a, a quite confused just with the word. We in a, in yeah, our yeah. spirit in our spirit we know exactly who Yeshua is, even before he came to to be flesh. But in this context, in this. Um, uh, part of chat it said you know that he he came as an adversary right so it's quite confused if we goes to to the roof or, right. you're, you're well, getting caught up in semantics yeah. there you're getting yeah, caught up in words all he did is he came as somebody opposing him, him just yeah. like it says in the uh, like if he became like a stop sign he just he just opposed kind of his direction and got in front to stop him to do that you're, you're getting this word adversary and you're putting way too much behind that word and you're turning it into something that's bigger than what it is he's not coming as satan uh to do that so you're having a hard time with the word play here okay he just it basically means he came somebody to oppose yeah. to oppose balaam and, yeah through questioning he was questioning yeah and, he was questioning if, yeah you know we as human beings a lot of people start questioning us we're gonna can we're yeah. gonna think 
well, they're against me. They're an adversary to right, me. Right. And they're well, not no necessarily the they're just uh, yeah. raising questions to make us think deeper or right. change our position yeah. or whatever. Well, what we got to remember, too, is we're looking at a translation. And translations, people have to use words in translation that sometimes don't always bring out the deeper meanings of other of the of the Hebrew. So this is a translation of the Hebrew. Um, and it's this particular translation. I don't always like it. I think the TLV is good, but I don't think it's great. Um, but we, we go with translations, but we have to get the what the key important is to understand is, is the, the what is it trying to say overall? And it's in what is it? Try, what's the big picture? you know and then deal with the little pictures but it, it, you're yeah you're getting tripped up on this word but it's not really meant the way that you're talking about it just simply means to oppose uh go ahead linda i don't want to belabor this too much guys i don't want to stay on this too much so linda go ahead a technical thing it's hard to hear everybody right now including you adrian something's wrong with the volume on our end uh it's probably just um it's probably your your end uh there it's um uh, or we have we have uh, internet issues here. I, I have I'm not plugged directly in. I'm just on the internet. Um, but also when we talk over each other, it's hard to follow along. Okay, there was several of us talking over each other, so that's hard too. Um, yeah, I, I know. Speak up loud so people can hear you. You know, backed up on time, but this reminded me of you know what happened with David with the on you know where God says go and number Israel and Judah, and then he gets angry about it and tells the family because I, I didn't understand that yeah really like that god chose to say them so i'm go go with them but then he's angry yeah i think it's just the times where we have to study the scripture a little bit deeper because god isn't contradicting himself it's sometimes the actions of the people doing something or it's not god's timing you remember when uh uh yeshua's mom came to him and said hey can you can you please do this he goes sorry guys i was uh something happened there and uh oops i uh we lost internet connection so something happened here we got knocked off uh i didn't even change the name i've been david barsky this whole time that's always fun okay so so anyhow yeah so it was probably internet on our end losing us so i'm glad you guys are back hopefully you followed everything but uh we got we were talking about how miriam sometimes we do things and we have to look at, at the the bible seems to contradict itself but anytime we see any contradictions, we have to we have to pause and we have to look at it. We have to say, okay, the word of God doesn't con, uh, contradict itself. Maybe my understanding of what's going on or what is being said is going on. So you have to look into it deeper. And then we talked about Mary uh, when she approached Yeshua. Yeshua said, "Woman, don't you know it's not yet my time?" But because he loved her and honored her, he did it. Mm -hmm. So the same kind of thing with the the famine and the land and those kinds of things. It's like. Sometimes we try to push God ahead of us. We try to get God to act when we want Him to act. And because of His love for us, really makes it. Um, his love for us really makes it a, um, a really beautiful in a way, um, because He sometimes responds despite our love. You know, or, or I mean, despite our obedience, He still responds to us, right? So anyhow, let's continue on. So let's start at verse 32 here again. Hold on, guys. There's more and more questions all the time, but we got to get through this. Okay, I don't want to get caught up on some of those things. The angel of Adonai said to him, why have you beaten your donkey these three times? Behold, I came as an adversary because, uh, because your way before me is a reckless one. The donkey saw me and turned away from me these three times. If she had not turned away from me by now, I would have killed you indeed, mm -hmm. but let her live. Now, that's a good rebuke. That's a stern rebuke there. Balaam said to the angel of Adonai, I have sinned, for I did not know that you were standing in the road to oppose me. Now, if this is displeasing in your eyes, I will go back home. The angel of Adonai said to Balaam, go with these men, but speak only the word that I tell you. So Balaam went with ba Balak's princess. So we see here again that God, he's just confirming again, saying, listen, go ahead and go, but just say what I do, what I say, and just say what I say, right? So he's basically saying, he, he's, um, He's saying, be careful to make sure you do what I tell you to do. So it was very specific. So he had to stop him on the way for that because maybe Balaam just heard one little aspect of it. 
and decided, oh, okay, God told me this. So he loaded up, who knows? He could load up his donkey with all kinds of stuff and everything, who knows? But uh, we know that this came here. And so he goes, but only, and then he goes, so uh, where am I at? Uh, verse 36. Uh, oh, wait, yeah. Uh, but uh, verse 35, the angel of Adonai said to Balaam, go with the men, but speak only the word that I tell you. So Balaam went with Balak's princes. When Balak heard that Balaam had come, he went out to greet him at the Moabite city on the border of the, of, the, of the Arnon, the frontier of the territory. Balak said to Balaam, didn't I, didn't I send you an urgent summons? Why didn't you come to me? Am I really unable to reward you? Yeah. Look, I have come to you now, Balaam said to Balak. Can you just say anything? Can I just say anything? I must speak only the message which God puts into my mouth. Then Balaam went with Balak to Kirath Huzot. Uh, Balak sacrificed cattle and sheep and sent some to Balaam and the princes who were with him. In the morning, Balak took Balaam with him to the Mammoth Baal, and from there he saw part of the people. Okay, we got 15 minutes. Let's continue on. So now, then Balaam, Balaam said to Balak, Build me seven altars here and prepare uh, here and prepare for me here seven bulls and seven rams. Then Balak did just as Balaam had said. Balak and Balaam offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Balaam said to Balak, stay here beside your offering. I will go and perhaps Adonai will meet me. Whatever message he shows me, I will tell you. Then he went to a barren height. God met with Balaam and he said to him, I have prepared seven altars and on each altar I offered a bull and a ram. Adonai put a message into Balaam's mouth and said, return to Balak and speak this. Balaam went back to him. Behold, he was standing beside his offering with all the princes of Moab. Then he uttered his oracle and he said, from Aram, Balak brought me. Moab's kings from the mountains of the east, come, curse Jacob for me. Come, denounce Israel. How can I curse one whom God has not cursed? How can I denounce one whom Adonai has not denounced? From the rocky peaks I see him, from the heights I behold him. Look, he lives as a nation apart. He does not consider himself as being like the other nations. Who can count Jacob's dust? Who can number a fourth of Israel? Let my soul die the death of the upright, and I, and let my end be like his. Balak said to Balaam, what have you done to me? I brought you to curse me, my enemies, but look, you've actually blessed them. But in response, he said, mustn't I speak whatever Adonai puts into my mouth? So again, we see here Balak is really, um, Balak again means destroyer or destruction or the destroyer one or something like that. Um, when we look at that name, we see here where he wants God to say what he wants. And I think we could take away from that is a lot of times we want, we want God to respond to our way of things and not his way of things. That's really what we can take away from this is that we can spend so much time trying to hear God's word. But if it doesn't quite match what we have to say, we get upset about it because we're looking for God to answer a particular way and, and a particular word at a particular, you know, time or whatever. And when he doesn't respond that way, we get angry. Has anybody ever experienced this? I mean, you guys are all looking at me with smiles on your face. So everybody's got a smile on your face. So I know that you guys have done, everyone, all of us have done this to one degree or not. Uh, Paul, you're going to say something? Okay. Okay. Uh, I wanted to say we're well, if it's the important your, thing, if we're past uh, that, right. we're not going to keep going. No, hi. Good morning. No. Go ahead. Man is try uh, a three person. I mean, yeah. Spirit, soul, Spirit, soul and and body. And body, right? Mm -hmm. And our soul was three parts, mind, will, and emotions, right? right? So we're creating God's image and likeness in that sense yeah. as well. Yeah, we are. And, and we see this here is that Balak could not do that. He could not get beyond this idea that why, why don't you, I mean, I'm paying you, we're offering bulls and rams we're we're making an altar and you see god and you're supposed to be cursing my enemies and you're blessing them that's not the point behind this thing and that's kind of uh, uh balak's attitude behind this thing it's like why aren't you doing what i'm asking you i'm the king of this country <laughs> i'm the king it better be done my way or it won't be done anyway and i think that we just have to be careful with that guys is that we just have to be careful with um hey, there's sophia now she's online hey sophia so she's here um so we just got to be careful that we uh that when we come before the lord that we be we're prepared to hear what the lord says we don't always agree with it 
and and he's going to do what he's going to do he's uh god is god we are we're made in his image we don't make him in our image right that's a good point good point okay so we see that here and then it says um uh then verse 13 again then balak said to him Come now with me to another place where you can go, where you can see a part of them only, not all of them. Curse them for, for me from there. <laughs> so maybe this location isn't right. Maybe I have to go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, and then we see that. So that's pretty interesting. Um, he took him to look out to lookout field. That's capitalized. So it's called lookout field. So there must have been a lookout field in those days. A makeout point in those days too, I guess. I don't know. You look over the city with the lights. She's like, oh. <laughs> okay. Anyhow, that's the the fun part of me. I'm sorry. Uh, it doesn't say that in the scriptures, but it's close. Okay. Anyhow, on top of the uh, Pisgah, he built seven altars and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Stay here beside your offering, he said to Balak, while I am meeting uh, over there. Adonai met Balaam there and put a message into his mouth, and he said, "Return to Balak and speak thus." So he went to him, and behold, he and the princes of Moab were standing beside his offering. Balak asked him, what did Adonai say? So he uttered his oracle and said, rise, Balak, hear me, son of Zippor. God is not a man who lies, or a son of man who changes his mind. Now, what's interesting a lot of times is that when you are ministering to the Jewish people, and they say that Yeshua cannot be God, they use this passage, and they use that verse, and they say, God is not a man who lies so god is not a man and is, so god can't be a man because you can't you guys are worshiping a man and the bible says god is not a man it's like wait read the whole text read it in context read what it says it says that he's not a man who lies right he's not like a man who lies and he's not like the son of a man or just a human being who changes his mind does he speak and then not do it or promise and not fulfill it look i received the command to bless he has blessed. I cannot change it. No misfortune is to be seen in Jacob uh, and no misery in Israel. Adonai, their God, is with them. The king's shout is among them. Uh, God is bringing them from Egypt with the strong horns of the wild ox. There is no sorcery effect against Jacob, nor any divination against Israel. I love that. Uh, Linda once said one time that, you know, there's people who like try to curse us or try to give us, you know, throw something heavy at us. And Linda brought up a passage one time. Linda, you want to unmute and say what you said? What you shared with the leadership one time is like um, you had spoke about the curses falling back on the people who, who curse us. Go ahead and bring that up. It's in Proverbs. Yeah. A curse that is tried to put on an unrighteous person cannot touch them and returns to the one who cursed them. That's right. All right. So we see that here kind of going on here. So when a, a sorcerer, when, when Jezebel speaks against you, you don't have to run and hide, right? Amen. There is no sorcery effect against Jacob, nor any divination against Israel. Now it will be said of Jacob and Israel, see what God has done. These people rise like lionesses, like a lion who does not rest until he eats his prey and drinks his victim's blood. Then Balak said to Balaam, do not curse them or bless them at all. Balaam answered and said to Balak, haven't I told you all that Adonai says I must do? Balak said to Balaam, come with me to another place. Perhaps it will be pleasing to God, and you may curse them for me from there. So Balak took Balaam to the top of Peor, overlooking the wasteland. Balaam said to Balak, build me seven altars here and prepare seven bulls and seven rams for me. Balak did just as Balaam said and offered a bull and a ram on each other. Well, here, as you see, uh, Balaam, he, he was kind of caught in the middle here between a very stubborn king that would not take God's word and and placed it from one place to another to another um but he he kind of uh, balaam had to honor god had to honor his word and also here he had to honor the king too because he would have been killed or do, he had to do what the king asked him to do so he did do that but he's gonna he's you know do we see in here where it says anything else we look at verse 20 uh, chapter 24 how lovely are the tents of jacob that's where we get the song <laughs> matovu that we start our litur liturgical service with every week Mato. right so we see that we don't have a lot of time guys i got to get ready for um worship because i'm also doing liturgy today i'm doing kind of i'm now doing the torah oh, portion really? doing totally tasty i'm thankful for my sister oh, who's going to be preaching say, today you should just preach i should just me, preach for her yeah, then too exactly. but um 
and you know, I got to go, but if we please read chapter 24 uh, during be, before our service to start. Read chapter 24, read through all of that, um, and all the way through, all the way to the uh, ninth verse of chapter 25. That would be, that will finish up the rest of the uh, Torah portion of Balak for us today. But take a look at it. I think things change a little bit, but you'll see here where, where God's word still had to be spoken and said. And they had to be honored. And it doesn't matter what we do. We, we can't change God's. I mean, there's only been two people, I think, that changed God's mind in the scriptures. One was Moses and one was Abraham. And it, and it didn't even change God's mind. It just it says that God relented. It's like, okay, all right. I hear what you're saying. But he honored them and loved them and did what they asked. I think, right? They're the only well, two I can think of. There's maybe, um, uh, I mean, obviously, you know, he um, wasn't punished for taking Lot. He was told not to take any of his family, but he took Lot anyway. Right? I'm not sure about that. What? That he took Lot. What do you mean? He took his. He was told to go and take nobody with him, right? But he took his family. Lot wasn't being his child. I mean, I don't know. I don't think the Lord said that. So get up from here, your house, your family, and everything else, and go. Okay. But that doesn't that doesn't mean his cousin couldn't join him or anything. It just meant his household, his father's household. All right. His father stayed back in, uh, you know, and then uh, he went forward from that land. Basically, what he was saying is, hey, get up from where your your family is settled and and go. And so when he left and took a lot with him, it doesn't mean that that was a negative thing. Okay. Just it's just he took a group of people. And Linda, go ahead. I got to close in prayer here after Linda, and we got to get going. I love the fact that in spite of uh, Balaam wanting to curse and do all that, he caused bless God caused blessing. And this is one of the, I guess, maybe the second prophecy of Messiah in Numbers 24, verse 17. I see him, yet not at this moment. I behold him, yet not in this location. For a star will come from Jacob, a scepter will arise from Israel. Amen. Thank you for doing that. It's a good way to end. It's just I'm looking at the time and we didn't get through it. But uh, the remainder of that powerful prophetic word, really read it. Like she said, 20 ver 24 verse 17, right? Mm -hmm. It's a messianic prophecy. It's pretty powerful. So read through that. And uh, we'll, you know, if Peter will be back next week. You guys can ask him a bunch of those kinds of questions on that one. Get them all. But anyhow, so let's close in prayer. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for this time. Uh, give us uh, the opportunity to really, truly let go of ourselves, to, to stop building altars, where you, where, to just to hear, hear you speak in our lives, our lives differently than what you've already spoken into our lives. Help us to see you, seek you and to see you and to hear your voice and what you have in store for us, Lord, and help us to become one as you are one. Help us to, to really, truly... Uh, to walk according to your way, not our way. And Lord, we just want to submit our hearts to you and our lives to you and our unity to you and help us to become one. As your prayer has prayed, Lord, for us to be one, as you and the Father are one, help us to be one. And we, we give you the glory and praise for this day. Abba, Bashem, Yeshua, HaMashiach. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. Have a wonderful Shabbat. And hopefully you guys will join us here when we start at 11. Um, uh, God bless you guys, Jeff, Julia. It was good to see God you. Bless you too. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Rebecca, Shabbat shalom. shalom. Thank you guys. God bless you guys. Alex, we'll see you soon. Guys, thank you. You're I very hope welcome. To, I hope to get back to you guys soon. Miss y'all. Hopefully, you're getting rest. Uh, you're in the hospital. Yeah, I know, but it's, I miss you guys anyway, and I just hope that I can get back to see you guys soon. Okay. God bless. You too. Thank you. You bet. Bye-bye. Uh We've gathered to worship here in the house of the risen sun.